agricultural revolution took place about 10,000 years ago. At that time, man was hunter-gatherers, and they began to settle down and do subsistence farming. So they grew enough basically for their family or their village. But why? Well, there's two thoughts that come behind this. The first is environmental. About 10,000 years ago, the Ice Age ended, and a lot of the ice sheets melted and receded, giving a lot more fertile land in the mid-latitudes, enabling there to be more land for farmers to grow their foods. A second thought is, is cultural, that there's this thought that man inherently wanted to settle down, and when the land became fertile and allowed them to grow food, that enabled them to settle down, grow food, and start villages. The second agricultural revolution began in Great Britain during the 18th century. Major factors that allowed it to happen were mechanization, transportation, and large-scale irrigation. Inventions such as the steel plow and mechanized harvesting also made a big difference. Now, during the same time period, Thomas Malthus was writing about that we were going to run out of food, that he looked at how many crops were in Great Britain, and that it wasn't going to meet the demands of the population booming. It was this second agricultural revolution that allowed us to overcome what Malthus said, that we were able to grow more foods. The result, we had better diets, we had longer lifespans, our population increased, there were more workers for industry, which allowed the Industrial Revolution to boom, and then finally the growth of cities. Another important part of the Second Agricultural Revolution was mechanization. Around the same time period, Great Britain passed something called the Enclosure Act. What this did was allow private sale of public grazing land. See, in the old days, the community used to have open land where anybody can use it to graze their animals. Well, the Enclosure Act allowed private people to go in buy that public land. Well, what that does is force out the family farmer. So a lot of family farmers lose their land and you get one big giant corporate farm. Now, that means less farms, but it also meant that those farms were much more efficient. Those farmers that lost their job ended up going to places like London to become the factory workers or left for America to fill the factory jobs that were in demand there. The third agricultural revolution took place during the 1950s and 60s. It was also called the Green Revolution, so they mean the same thing. This was when we had a massive change in the way we grew rice, corn, and wheat. Developing countries are the ones that saw the biggest impact because industrialized countries had already been mass producing enough food for their people. There are three main impacts that we see from the Green Revolution. Number one, hybrid seeds. Number two, GMOs or genetically modified organisms. And number three, machinery. So let's go ahead and break each one of those down. So let's start out taking a look at hybrids. In the post-World War II era, the 1950s and 60s, we see a lot more research being done with hybrids. This is when we breed two or more plants with like characteristics. We actually have been doing this for hundreds of years, for example, orange trees, but now the Green Revolution sees us take it to the grains. One important product of this was rice. The dwarf variety rice comes out. This had a longer, denser rice grain, which was able to feed more people. Originally, it was called IR8. Then later on, we developed IR36, which matured very rapidly and allowed places to be able to do two crops in a year. Finally, in today's world, we're using IR72. We started doing that in the 1990s. Another grain that sees a really huge impact is wheat. In fact, we improved wheat so much during the Green Revolution that in the 1960s, Mexico had to import grain, and only a few years later, Mexico was exporting wheat instead of importing it. Next, we're going to take a look at GMOs. A GMO, or genetically modified organism, is when you change the DNA of a seed. We started doing this in the 1970s, and in the 1990s, it became very common and mainstream. Three very common GMOs are corn, soybeans, and cotton. The three main things we've done with GMOs is number one, we've increased the yields. We're able to produce much more food to feed the increasing population of the world. Number two, we have made the seed and the plant resistant to diseases. 
And number three, we have made it resistant to pesticides so that when pesticides are sprayed on fields, it doesn't affect the plant. Now, there are some people that are very cautious about eating GMOs, but at this time, there has been no definitive side effect shown from people consuming a GMO. Our third category we're going to take a look at is machinery. During the Green Revolution, we see a lot more higher technology machinery arrive to developing countries. Uh, the machinery includes things like tractors, tillers, and broadcast seeders. This allowed more of the population to be fed, which helped the booming populations in places like China and India. So there are positives and negatives that go along with the Green Revolution. Anytime we see a technological jump in human history, we can trace down positives and negatives. Positives of the Green Revolution, number one, higher yields. We're able to keep pace with the growing population of the planet, solving the Malthusian problem of running out of food. The next thing we're able to do with the higher yields is solve hunger in places like Latin America, Southeast Asia, and East Asia. Another part of the positive is that universities got a lot of funding to do research in this field. And corporations were making huge profits off of it. Finally, food prices went down. Food became more affordable, not just in industrialized countries, but in parts of the world where people struggle to be able to afford just the basic necessities. So while there were some positives about the Green Revolution, there's also some negatives. Number one, the increased yields being produced is putting a strain on the land, causing things like erosion to occur. Number two, because of all the growth that's being done, we're starting to see the nutrients get burned out of the soil. Number three, in the old days, farmers were able to keep seeds from a previous crop to use in the next season. But now seeds are being produced in laboratories and farmers are becoming dependent on those seeds. Number four, we're starting to see chemical runoff going into our lakes, rivers, and streams. And number five, fossil fuels are starting to be burned at a higher rate because of all the new machines like tractors. So that's contributing to global warming. Music